rest is empty with no brain But the clever nerd, the best MC with no chain you ever heard Take it from the Tech Nine, hold up They bit, don't know they next shine from Shinola Everything that glitter ain't fish scale Let me think, don't let a faint get in smell hey Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know Today we're looking at a fragrance from an American niche house called Tokyo Milk And the scent is called Arsenic Now, this is the house that I first encountered in Sephora in New York City in Union Square. I saw these very interesting bottles with the notes listed on them and they were all priced in the middle to $30 range. And I wound up purchasing two that day, um, Arsenic and Bittersweet. And I like them both quite a bit. Now, after that, Adriana from Decan Shop started sending me a lot of their stuff uh, from the Curiosity um, line for my sample shopping episodes and well that stuff didn't really blow me away the fragrances from their dark line I am a bigger fan of and so basically Tokyo Milk is an American fragrance in cosmetic brand it was started in Denver Colorado by a woman named Margot Elena uh, no relation to Jean-Claude Elena I don't think and besides doing fragrances soaps body care products and candles they also make greeting cards cosmetic cases and pocket mirrors their original products were all offered in antique looking packages featuring brown and white sort of sepia labels and photographs and in 2011 they did introduce their dark line and their newest line is called Fate and Fortune. Arsenic is part of their dark line. It came out in 2011 and it has a note breakdown of absinthe, vanilla salt, cut greens, and crushed fennel. Um, these come in two sizes. You can get a 10 ml roller ball for 22 bucks or you can get a 1.6 ounce spray for $36. Um, I think the better deal obviously is in the spray bottles and these are available at Eau de Parfum Concentration um, and you can get them at Sephora, um, some Ricky's locations in New York City and the Tokyo Milk website sells these as well. I think Beauty, Beauty Habit does as well. Now as far as your presentation on these go, I actually do not have the box for this. Um, I got rid of it when I moved, but it says Tokyo Milk uh, Marquet de Posse. Uh, you have a little bit of a bug. It says Arsenic Eau de Parfum. It's number 17. And in the back, you do, oh, on the side, you just have something that says um, Margot Elena. So her name is on the bottle. On the back, Tokyo Milk Dark, number 17, Arsenic, Absinthe, Vanilla, Salt, Cut Greens, Crushed Fennel, and a sticker on the bottom. The cap is really light um, and the atomizer works just fine. So I gotta be honest with you guys, I really like the way these bottles look. I like the dark theme and the illustration uh, on the bottle and the note breakdown on the back. And what really strikes me about these two scents that I bought from the collection is how sort of 3D the fragrances are. And that's not a term that I use to describe many scents. Uh, I, I usually do when I'm describing one of Josh, Josh Meyer's imaginary author's fragrances. And this line sort of has that as well. And what I mean when I say third dimension is I mean that the scents sort of have this um, really authentic feel and the notes just really pop with vibrancy. Uh, bittersweet sort of has a cake batter vibe and arsenic really at its heart is a green scent and what this one smells like to me, almost to the T, is if you get a glass out, you fill that glass up with absinthe, you add some salt in and some vanilla, and then throw in a bunch of freshly mowed grass. That's what I get out of this one through and through. And while that might not sound so intriguing as a perfume, I think that it's a really nicely done springtime scent because all the notes in this one really are there and they are very vibrant. And you know, sometimes with less expensive fragrances, they can be very linear. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, this one I don't feel has a heck of a lot of development, but I will say that as it sort of progresses on your skin, the herbal components dry down and it comes more about sort of green notes and vanilla. Um, I would say it's a very sort of non-traditional gourmand perfume. Uh, this one is definitely unisex, but I actually think that this one's a little better suited for a man. Uh, performance is not through the roof, but it does a good job. Maybe a bit pedestrian for, the, for an eau de parfum, but you get a nice little siage trail from this one. I think that it's best for spring and fall, but you can wear this one in all four seasons. 
And um, while I think it probably is going to do best for you as a casual fragrance, I think it can be pulled off at work. The greenness does have a bit of a fougere vibe to the fragrance. Uh, kind of a difficult scent for me to make comparisons to. You know, Crabtree and Evelyn put out a fragrance that's supposed to smell like absinthe called Black Absinthe. I uh, haven't smelled that one yet. Um, absinthe by Nasamato is a lot deeper and a lot more layered. It really has stage progressions but it does open up a little bit similarly to this one. And another one that sort of has this vibe, if you can't get this one, um, is Food Absinthe by the Artisan Parfumé. But the ones that I mentioned are all more expensive um, than this one. So if you're looking for sort of a green absinthe scent, this might be um, the best bang for your buck that, that you're gonna get for it. If someone were trying to talk you into buying this fragrance, I think they'd say at the price point, for an eau de parfum you're doing really well um i think they tell you that it's a unique fragrance and even though it's a little weird it's very functional um it, it's a little bit avant-garde uh but uh but to be avant-garde and to be have the application uses that it does i think is, is a really impressive thing and i think any well-rounded collection should have a couple of sort of off the wall scents like this one i think if someone were trying to talk you out of it i think they'd say this is one of those scents that you really have to enjoy to want a bottle of i think they'd also say that it's a little bit maybe hard to wear for some people and perhaps is a little bit too fruity um and they probably would say that there are better comparable scents out there for more money, but that extra money might be worth it. Uh, I like this one, guys. I'm going to give Arsenic a 7 out of 10. It's not the end-all, be-all, but it's unique. It performs well, and it smells good. And there's something nice to say about being able to walk into a Sephora and walk out with a bottle of a quality perfume for under $40. So... Um, I gotta give this house more attention. If you like green scents, I definitely would check this one out and the brand out. And while I do find a lot from their original line redundant, I think there are a lot of really well done and worthwhile scents in their darker collection. You know, this is American perfume brand that we should be proud of. So there you go, guys. That is my review on Arsenic by Tokyo Milk, their dark line. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see better sweet reviewed as well. And we'll be back next week with more videos. I am Maximilian.